Welcome back to the Dallas Prospect. The Mavericks take a three games to two lead, downing the Oklahoma City Thunder last night. This was a pretty compelling bounce back game from the Mavericks. I know, shocking take. I'm happy about a win. Who would have thought it? But the thing is, they really should have won game four. Like, it almost took a mind-bogglingly bad collapse for them not to win game four. And it's, I don't want to say it's similar to what we experienced in the first round against the Clippers, but we should have won after we completed the comeback. We just made some less than ideal strategic decisions, shall we say. But in this game, the Mavericks get a 104-92 win on the road again. The Thunder were phenomenal at home this year, and it really has not mattered. The Mavericks have been pretty on the money on the road this year in the postseason, with the exception being game one in both instances. They won two out of three in LA. They've now won two out of three in OKC. So having said all of that, there is some reason for hope. More so, Luka Doncic, despite reports that he has been playing through, what was the word that the sideline reporter used? Ah, here it is. Enduring pain beyond comprehension that Luca regularly receives two to three hours of intense therapy daily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's dealing with a right knee sprain, which we knew, left knee soreness, back soreness, and left Achilles soreness, which has been apparently hampering him for the last few months. Were this the regular season, Luca would be shut down for at least two weeks. And uh, that's that says a lot. And I told you, even if they can get extended rest between any of these series, like even if they had been able to win this, win game four and then win last night so that they won the series in five, they would get some extended rest, although maybe not seven games because good Lord does Denver look like Denver again. But even with that being the case, it's not going to be world changing for Luca getting that rest. You want it, but it's not going to like reset him back to MVP form. He's just going to be banged up for a few weeks of the off season. And it's going to take basically half the off season, at least just getting himself healthy again. Hopefully that's all it is. And there's no surgery needed, but for at least last night, Luca rolled back to that form because he looked like the MVP last night absolutely phenomenal came out shot the ball far far better for the Mavericks pulling up his stats here he ended with 31 points 10 boards and 11 assists 12 of 22 from the field 5 of 11 from three and he added a crucial block in the final minute of the game as OKC was I don't want to call it a last gasp it was about 54 seconds left OKC down six he blocks fellow MVP candidate Shea Gilgis Alexander off the backboard on a fast break that could have really applied a lot of pressure to Dallas. Similar to game four, Dallas really controlled all of this game. They led by two after the first. They led by, what was it like? I'm trying to remember how much they were up at the half. But going into the fourth quarter, they had a, a nice little lead, like 11 points. And so you had this feeling that Dallas has been in control. Again, never getting super far out ahead. They did push the lead to 18 at one point, but then OKC immediately rattled off an 8-0 run and applied the pressure again. But this was just a very well-balanced game. Luka moved a lot better. He shot the ball a lot better. The team, including Luka, still defended phenomenally. And in the first half, good googly moogly, Derek Jones Jr. was a monster. Six of six from the field, three of three from three while playing hellacious defense. He had 15 points at the half. I think he ended up with 19, which is a playoff career high for him. Yeah, Dallas was up 54-44 at the half. Luka was sitting on 17, 6, and 7 in 21 minutes. So he was already cooking. Kai, a uh, little, little slower at the half, seven points in 18 minutes. P.J. Washington finally crashed back down to earth. Um... And that's not to take away and say that he didn't have a good game. He had a he had an impactful game, and he got his buckets where he got them. He still ended with 10 and 10, so he still got a double-double out of the guy despite the defense he was having to play, that level of defense he was having to play. But, you know, obviously when you had 27, 29, 
or 29, 27, and 22, I want to say it was the last three games. This was much more so coming back down to earth, um, going two of seven from three. But timely buckets, including in that fourth quarter, as OKC is trying to make that last push. And Luka hitting those big shots and big moments, back-breaking shots. OKC making a run, loose ball. Luka shoots a dupe, dupe, dupe three, a deep three over Dort. There's where that came from a deep three over Dort or, you know, some other just step back, whatever nonsense to keep them in their place. So huge, huge win for them. I loved the energy from Derek Lively. He had uh, 11 and 10 again, icing the game at the end. OKC with about 217 left, tried to sneak in a couple hack of Livelys. Did not work. Lively, cool as a cucumber at the line, knocking them down. And I saw this from... I want to say it was from uh, Followell saying that Lively had I, I don't have the stat in front of me, I guess, but it was basically talking about how um, Dallas or Lively had the First Maverick postseason or the youngest Mavericks postseason double double. That's what it was. Yeah, the youngest Mavericks postseason double double. Twenty years age. I don't know the exact days, but uh, it passed uh, Roy Tarpley or was second to Tarpley. This would be a better stat if I remembered it off the top of my head. I realize Dis discard uh, this very poor effort at a stat slash fact here. But I loved it. Um, I loved a lot of what they got from the team. This was a phenomenal, phenomenal response by the Mavericks. They've responded so well. They've yet to lose back-to-back postseason games. And yeah, I think that says a lot by itself. I also liked the coaching decision, even though they played a little dangerous with it because they're getting nothing out of Exum. And because Hardaway has been Hardaway uh, and that magic, whoo, my goodness, did that magic wear off? He one possession. He put up two of the ugliest shots I've ever seen um, in this game. And he had several other bad possessions too. Going with Jaden Hardy and giving him a green light, it wasn't perfect. He he was really taking those shots, you know, pulling the trigger in that first half, and he was not shooting the ball well for that. But even still, you were able to create a little bit. He had two times in the game where he had a beautiful setup for a, a pick-and-roll lob alley-oop to, to Derek Lively. Great chemistry there, and it just applied pressure. He played with a pace that the guys he was playing instead of just don't play with. And it kept the Thunder a little bit off balance. Be a little bit careful with how that goes. I understand he's he's going to go. That's what he does. He gets the ball. He's looking to score. He's looking to make something happen. But maybe next time it'll be a little bit of a better performance uh, shooting the ball. He'll be a little bit higher percentage. We'll see. But the energy was great. Played a little bit risky with it, but it's all right. The The Mavericks in addition to the scoring offense that they had, their defense remained smothering. They held the Thunder to 30% from three and 39% um, from the field overall in the first half. And that allowed them to kind of seize control. Overall, OKC ended up shooting 43%, still only 25% from three. And by the end, they weren't even really just looking to shoot threes. They were 10 of 40 from three. And where they were really hurting Dallas was Dallas was closing out aggressively and OKC was attacking that close out with pretty good success there in the fourth quarter. So it's a give and take uh, with, with how badly they were shooting the ball. Maybe you adjust there a little bit and you don't risk the blow by because there is a layer of open space between your defense and the rim protection. And OKC was able to take advantage of that for a little bit, but even still free throws were a huge difference here too. The Dallas shot 13 made 10 of them. So much, much better 10 of 13 OKC only eight of 10. So not near as many free throws attempted in this game as last game or even the one before that. Dallas, if I if I had nitpicks in this game, Dallas's turnovers were still way, way too high. 14 turnovers for the game compared to six for OKC. And uh, that came even as OKC had that 8-0 run after Dallas went up 18. Dallas just kept giving the ball away. Bad possessions, bad shot selection, turnovers that were just unnecessary. And uh, it put them in a hole. But where they offset that, was the defense and the fact that they rebounded so well, 46 to 33 in the rebounding department, basically even on the offensive glass, nine to eight in Dallas's favor. 
They also added five blocks and five steals. So I love what they got out of them. Gafford, better, 4-4 four four, uh, shooting the ball, 9-7 and seven in 25 minutes. And uh, yeah, a lot, a lot to like here from what you got out of this team. Hardaway, it, look, Hardaway is unplayable in the fourth quarter. And the fact that he was still in there in crucial situations was just wild to me. But even still, um, you know, it's it, it's a lot to be happy about with this way. Not just the 3-2 edge, but also the fact that this team now can close it out at home and make up for kind of dropping the ball in game four. Speaking of Derek Jones, this is from Tim Cato. He said, this is a quote, um, if we don't take a step back, you're going to be trying to find a minimum every year. He declined more money and an opportunity to play for the Celtics in order to come to Dallas. Now he's turned into a vital star or a vital starter, I should say, on this team. So just fantastic, the impact here. Wherever he goes, hopefully he stays here in Dallas. He deserves to be paid. Hopefully he stays here. But wherever he goes, that team better have a clear somebody somebody I like this phrase somebody used and and I forgive me for not being able to credit them because I don't remember who said it on Twitter but uh they need a clear ecosystem in mind in which he can thrive that doesn't mean cater to him but you got to have a team that the pieces fit together to create his ideal opportunities which he has in Dallas one change up I liked here as well um to address Lou Dort's aggressiveness and how he's handling defending the screen and roll the Mavericks a couple times in this game had Kyrie be the screener and the first time Dort just wiped him out drew an off or drew a foul on Dort the next time the Thunder reluctantly switched and that gave Luca a better matchup so absolutely keep attacking them with that action because that's how you use Dort's aggressiveness against him or at the very least get Luca a little bit more favorable of a matchup I'm not going to say an easy matchup but a little bit more favorable of a matchup Let's see here. <laughs> you know, for, for how few free throws were shot in this game, there were still a couple times that uh, there were still a couple of times that SGA got to the line that it was just kind of like, mm, I know Luca called for that challenge in Dallas challenge and they lost it. The body contact's not there. I'll, I'll say this. The body contact, SGA initiates it. He falls down. Luca doesn't budge. I think what people are missing is similar. I, and this, I only say this because I want to be fair. I don't want to look like we're the hypocrites on the opposite side of the fence. Now that it, it, the tables have turned navigating that looks like Luca's knees hit into, into SGAs. I didn't hear the official say that, but seeing different replays of it and just trying to look at that play and see if there was something else. I did feel like they maybe bumped legs, the upper body contacts, not much. And it's all initiated by SGA. But it looks like Luca, as his hips turn, hits SGA's legs, and that helps the whole thing. I still wouldn't have called it if I was the official, probably. But once it was called, and then you see that, it kind of felt to me like, oh, there's your justification for it. Doesn't change anything. Fortunately, it didn't have any impact on it. Let's see here. Shout out to Chris Arnold, by the way, uh, Mavs DJ, MC, whatever you want to call him, MC. It would be the better way to put it. Uh, he predicted this bounce back win, citing that the Mavericks the last two months of the season had a road record of like, it wasn't the last two months of the season, but the Mavericks road record was like 25 and 16 and what their playoff road record was, which I mentioned earlier. So very, very good there. Um, <laughs> and how good was Derek Jones Jr.'s defense? OKC shot 0 of 8 when guarded by him in game five. That's impressive. Now, if you want to look broader terms, SGA's uh, as great as a series as he's had, his overall stats guarded by Luca, 42 possessions, 29.3% from the field, 27.5% from three, and three turnovers. Luca's had a big impact on it. And the Mavericks as a whole have had a big impact. 92 points is the fewest points OKC has scored all year, regular season or postseason. That is amazing. Oh, I found the stat, the Tarpley stat. I do have it. Amazing. Derek Lively had 11 points and 10 rebounds tonight to become the youngest Mavs player to notch a double-double in the playoffs. 20 years, 93 days. He joins Roy Tarpley, Sam Perkins, Dale Ellis, and Marquise Daniels as the only Mavs rookies to have a double-double in the postseason. Huzzah! I did have it somewhere. 
All really good stuff here. Mark Followell adds, Mavericks were 14 of 35 on threes last night. 14 plus made threes has been the biggest indicator in the NBA this postseason. Teams that make that many or more uh, are 28 and four this postseason. That means they're winning 87 and a half percent of the time. So you shoot that the three that well, you're almost guaranteed winning this postseason. That seems to be the trend. So now you have another stat to kind of look for. How well are you shooting the three? This team fortunately is built that it doesn't have to rely on that. But if the other team is shooting that well, mm, you might have some concerns. Uh, just to give it a comparison, uh, nowhere near over the last five postseasons with teams winning 65% of the time. Very good. Let's see. Anything else before I wrap this up? Oh, Nick Angstad here. OKC had the number two half-court offense in the regular season, 105.7 points. Tonight, Dallas held them to 91.6 half-court offensive rating. Sorry, I meant offensive rating, not points. Um, which would have been worse than Detroit's half-court offense uh, at 92. That is how humbling this Mavericks defensive effort was last night. And really, most of game four until they imploded at the end. Speaking of uh, Derek Jones Jr., he had 15 of his 19 points in the first half, but not only did he make both free throws when he was called upon late in the game, he also blocked a Chet Holmgren three and then got a run out dunk in transition as Luca found him, as Luca threw like another 87 foot pass alley oop to Lively earlier in the game. So lots of greatness on display there, but I loved that impact from Derek Jones Jr. Second half offensively, not having to do as much, not able to do as much uh, as his red hot first half, but still when he made his presence known, my goodness, did he make his presence known. Yep. So uh, that's all the notes I got here. Let me know. What do you think? I wish I had more time to jump on a live stream today, but today's crazy for me. Let me know in the comments. How good was this Mavericks victory? Do you think this team is turning the corner here or are we still, are we still kind of in that up and down roller coaster that we've been seeing where, Hey, we'll have a good game or two. And then we're going to find a way to shit the bed and we got to regroup. Let me know. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!